Hey, what's up? John Sanmez from SimpleProgrammer.com. So, I got this question from Muhammad about how to develop good problem-solving skills. He said that he was basically, he got into computer science and software development and is interested in it, but doesn't really have problem-solving skills, so he wanted to know how to develop those. And at first, I was like, oh, this is an easy question. Uh, you just, and then I had to think about this for a while because it's actually not that easy. Like, how do you develop the problem solving skills that you need as a programmer? And when I talk about these problem solving skills, what I mean is like, you, how do you know where to start? I think this is one of the most difficult things that I faced when I was starting my career. And, you know, and, and even today, as an entrepreneur primarily, I still have this problem, right? This is, you know, how do you, how do you, when you, when you're faced with a problem, how do you even know what to, where to begin, how to break the problem down, how to solve that problem and get to the end? A lot of people get overwhelmed. They do what's called problem admiration. They look at something that's large and they think of it as too large to tackle and they don't have a way to tackle this. So if you develop this skill, I think this is just, you know, in general, a valuable skill in life is to be able to figure out how to solve problems, how to really not just to solve them, but to break them down. And I'm not just talking about the algorithm type of problems. I did this video on where someone asked me to do their homework assignment. I talked about that. Uh, you can also check out a course I have on Plural site on, on job interviews, which which talks about how to solve those algorithm type problems. But I'm talking about problem skills in the, in the general here. So anyway, I had to think about this for a little bit. But it occurred to me that really the, the best way, I think the most rapid way to develop these problem solving skills is to see a lot of problems. Most of us only see our own problems, we don't see a lot of problems. When I think about back in my career, how I got to the point of becoming good at, at solving problems and, and developing this, this skill set, and even as an entrepreneur, as I'm discussing problems with other people, and even you know, especially doing these videos, right? Like doing this YouTube channel and doing, especially upping the amount of videos that I do has really helped me to solve a lot of problems in my own life is I've had to answer these questions. So basically it comes to exposure. So when I look again at my career and where I really feel like I made that click over, where I became good at solving problems, it's when I started trying to actively help other developers and sort of being a mentor. So. The way to look at it is this, right? So let's say that you're just working on your own problems as a software developer, and you face like maybe like two or three hard problems every day, maybe one a day, it depends on what you're working on and how you define a hard problem. That's that's not a huge amount of exposure, right? It's gonna take you a long time. You might struggle with those problems, right? So it's gonna take you, you're not getting a huge amount of exposure. But let's say that you are basically going around and helping everyone with their problems like you're kind of being the mentor the go-to person you might not be the expert but you know at first I wasn't an expert I just knew a little bit about something or I would just say hey let me come in and see if I can help you with the problem or I just volunteer to help someone with with an issue that they're facing and you know pretty soon the that reputation got around and I was being asked to help everyone with their problems now I didn't know the answers to all the problems, but I sat there and watched them and tried to figure it out. So I would get exposed to maybe 10 or 15 problems a day, right? That's a big, that's a big amount of exposure, right? So the more that I get exposed to the problems and the more that you see what the, what the kinds of problems are, because as you, as you get exposed to problems in spe uh, specific domains, you find that there's categories or classes of problems and everything kind of gets grouped into it. And so the more exposure you have, the better, the, the faster you'll find these patterns, right? We're, our brains are good at finding patterns. So, you, so repeated exposure is a really good way to be, to be able to, to find these patterns. So that, you know, that's where design patterns come from, right? So basically after doing that and mentoring and, and seeing a lot of different problems i'd seen so many problems and seeing how they're solved that i became good at solving problems right because i could quickly assess i knew what kind of steps w were taken and sometimes i didn't even solve other people's problems right sometimes just knowing that someone had a problem seeing that problem and then later hearing what their solution was or what the result was or working together with them to, to find the solution but just just knowing how it got solved and what the steps were that sort of trained me into that and so by having that large amount of exposure that is is what helped develop those skills so another you know part of that is is basically as, as an entrepreneur right again this is why if you, if you watch my entrepreneurs podcast that's the weekly mastermind group we have 
one of the reasons why mastermind groups or having any kind of mastermind group, which you should do this even if you're not an entrepreneur, is you're, I don't, I don't know too many developers that do this, but it's really useful, is you're sharing the problems that you have. And so you're being exposed to multiple problems, you're facing other people's problems, and you're seeing those problems. So the more exposure to problems that you have, right, there's only so many classes of problems, right? So many problems that, that you see. Again, even just doing these YouTube videos, I see a lot of emails, a lot of you email me the same questions or variations of those questions. And so, you know, by the time I've recorded like 2,000 YouTube videos, I'll have answered every question that there could possibly be. <laughs> not not really, but there's all variations of it, right? I think you could probably classify if you look at my at my videos and you could probably break it down to maybe like 50 different problems generally that, that people have. And, you know, I'm, I'm rehashing it sometimes or saying it in different ways. But anyway, I think that's really the, the best way to develop the problem solving skills is repeated exposure. And that's really, you know, for anything that you want to get good at, you need repeated exposure. Now you can, you could go through algorithm, if you're trying to solve algorithm problems and get good at that. I got a lot of repeated exposure doing algorithm problems by doing sites like Top Coder. There's a few sites like that. There's a book, uh, I believe Gail, I forgot her last name. It's like the number one book on Amazon. And <laughs> I'm, I'm always competing with it with, with soft skills. Someday I'm gonna knock her out of there, but she's got a good book. It's called Cracking the Coding Interview. It's honestly a good book because it has a lot of those type of problems. Before then I used to recommend John Bentley's Programming Pearls. It's still a good book, but that's that's another way to get good if you want to solve those problems is, you know, repeated exposure. I, I'm getting better at doing YouTube videos because I did a lot of YouTube videos. I got good at doing post like courses because I did a lot of Pluralsight courses. I got good at writing because I did a lot of writing. You gotta do a lot of stuff. So if you wanna get good at anything, you do it a lot. So problem solving skills, no different, but in the workforce, I'd say, you know, try to mentor, try to go and just solve other people's problems, participate in their problems. You're gonna get a much faster, you're gonna get, in, in a couple of years, you can, you can get the experience of a 10 year dev, right? And, and that's that's critical. That's going to boost you really far in your career. So take advantage of that opportunity and and, and do that. You know, it might make you feel a little uncomfortable at first. You don't have to know all the answers, right? You can just you can just say, can I help you with your problem? Can I take a look at it? And and that's what I did at first. And then I got good at. It. Then I got to the point where I'd seen so many problems. It's like the first thing that someone does when they encounter problems, they go and ask John because you know he's he can, he can solve a problem for me. So anyway. That's it. Uh, hopefully that helps you. Uh, if you like this video, subscribe to the channel. Talk to you next time. Take care.